numero uno is they just charge too much money for their vehicles. They want to squeeze every last dime out of the car. They have no personal involvement in it. It's just a used car they're selling. Generally, their commission is a percentage of the sales. The higher the price, the more money goes in their pocket. And generally, at the used car lots, they will go anywhere from two to four times what they actually paid for the vehicle that they're going to try to get you to pay. If they got a car they know sells, They'll wait until they get as much as they possibly can. If you're buying from a private individual, cars are one of the few big liquid assets that you can get money fast for. And of course, when you buy a car from a used car lot, they often have a lot of back-end extras that they don't tell you about until it's too late. If you ever do go to a used car lot and you have no choice because you can't find what you want except there, ask them what the price of the car is drive out not what they say it costs and then they're going to add all this stuff you want tax title license any fees they have i've seen some places add 900 or a thousand dollars of extra fees including getting the registration in your name there's all kinds of hidden things that they'll often stick in and of course a private individual isn't going to do that if they're selling you a car so of course price is a big deal but reliability is also something that you got to think about. I know now they advertise all over the place. These used car lots will say, oh, check the Carfax. We have the Carfax on the vehicle. Well, all that does is pass responsibility on the Carfax, not on themselves. And from my experience, it's not that reliable anymore. If you've watched any of my other videos, I told about my old cameraman who had a Honda that he bought from a collision shop that had been totaled it. Totaled it two more times. And then when he was buying a used car, just out of kicks, he car faxed it. And it said the car had never been in a wreck and had been totaled three times. I don't really trust that stuff anymore. And to add insult to injury, last week I had a customer. They were looking for a Toyota Corolla. They found one at a Ford dealer used car lot. So they brought it over here and the Ford dealer gave them the Carfax thing that said it hadn't been wrecked. Well, the first thing I did was jack it up in the air and saw that all the plastic stuff on the undercarriage was ripped off, torn. Some of it, half of it was missing and they cut the other half so it didn't drag on the ground anymore. And when I looked at the uh, radiator support, I found that Half of the latch was painted white, and the other half was the factory black. Obviously, the car had been wrecked and repainted, but the Carfax said it had never been wrecked. And they had a stupid sticker right on the window that said, as is, no warranty. So the Ford used car dealer there was doing a double protection. They put a little sticker on it that says, as is, no warranty. But they also handed Carfax that said it hadn't been in a wreck. So even you could show it was in a wreck and any fool could find that out. The Ford dealer just had to say, oh look, our sticker said there's no warranty that we didn't inspect it. But the Carfax said it wasn't wrecked. So if you want to sue somebody, sue Carfax because they told us it hadn't been wrecked. You really don't want to deal with any of this stuff when you're buying a used car. And on top of it all, they were asking an ungodly sum for this car. They wanted like $11,000 for a car that had 120,000 miles, had been wrecked, and even the body itself had a lot of paint chips on it because when they did the body work, it had been a while back, but a lot of the paint that they put on it chipped and flaked off, so <laughs> they were asking an outrageous amount of money for a car that wasn't even in that good shape cosmetically. But here again, the Ford dealer used car, they understood, hey, it's a Toyota Corolla. These things are easy to sell. Everybody wants them. And they're just stacking it up the highest they could possibly ask for it. Hope some fool pays that much. And if they don't, then over the course of weeks, they'll lower the price until somebody buys it. And of course, at most used car lots, they're trying to sell you these extended warranty packages. Now, consumer reports show that in the United States, over 55% of the people who bought these policies never used them, never made a claim, yet the average cost was $1,300. So there's $1,300 that you'll never see again. And even if you need to use it, I had a customer, they had one of these, the engine went out, they tried to use it. And the warranty company said the engine was damaged when you bought it. We don't pay for pre-existing conditions. So they didn't get the engine repaired, which would have cost thousands of dollars for free because they said, oh, that's a pre-existing condition. We don't pay for that. Now, of course, you want to have a mechanic like myself check out a used car before you buy it. That's the best insurance. But don't think that these warranty policies, which are just insurance policies, are going to cover all kinds of stuff. They don't care about you. And are you really going to take them to court over something? They know how much money that costs. And if they deny a claim, you know, 
take him to court, sure, but who wants to deal with that nonsense in the first place? And another reason not to buy from a used car dealer is a lot of them have these certified pre-owned cars that they certified. Well, who certified it? They certified it themselves. <laughs> and that reminds me of one of the craziest things I ever saw. I had gone to a Toyota dealer for a customer who was buying a used car there. And I'm checking it out in the parking lot and I find out that the thing is two quarts low on oil. So I told him, I said, well, my customer's not going to buy this car. It's an oil burner. It's two quarts low on oil. And this vehicle had a sign on it that said certified pre-owned car. <laughs> <laughs> they told me, oh, well, we haven't serviced it yet. Don't worry, we're going to service it. Which I told them, it's too late now, buddy. I see the car's two quarts low on oil. That means it's burning oil. I looked around, it wasn't leaking. It was burning oil. Previous owner didn't take care of it. Now it's too late. The engine's been damaged, so my customer did not buy the car. And this was one that said certified pre-owned. You know, once they change the oil, the oil's clean, you're not going to know that it's an oil burner until you buy it. And then you're stuck with it. And even if you had some kind of warranty, I've seen these warranties. They say stuff like, well, guaranteed against excessive oil consumption. Well, what's excessive oil consumption to me? If I bought a car and it burns any oil, that's excessive. I don't want that car. All those things have so many exclusions they can get away with. Not a good idea to buy from these pros. They paid anywhere from 30 to 50% generally of what they're selling it for. Well, they bought that from somebody. Why don't you buy it from somebody yourself and save? I actually used to know a guy that did that for a living. He told people that he would buy their new car because he knew how to negotiate so he could save a few thousand buying a new car for him, as long as they gave him their used car at the dealer trade-in value. So he got the cars at that price, which is cheap. Then mainly he had a used car business where he would then take those cars he got cheap and sell them at a higher price at his used car lot. So buying from a private individual, hey, much better idea really because Hey, when somebody needs money, cars that might go for 6000 on the street, hey, you go to say, what are traded in? Or I just want to trade the car and not buy another car like a CarMax? Ha, they're going to probably offer you two or three grand for the car. So when the shoe is on the other foot and you're buying a used car, take advantage of that and buy a good used car from a private individual. Because as I said, the dealers are professionals. But I've had plenty of customers buy used cars from private individuals. Those people, the private individuals they bought them from, they don't know all that much about cars and they just got tired of the car because oh well they need to fix this and that and they want another car now i'm not saying you can get a celica like this for 350 bucks like i did the customer was tired of the car and yeah the bumper was all yellow because she had it painted at high school and it all came off the paint the yellow underneath was there so i had to get my body guy to paint it and stuff there are some deals out there in the real world but you're not going to find them at dealerships when i bought that celica then my son who lived at home back then he was going to college he wanted a celica too so i started looking around well comparable cars like mine that i bought for 350 bucks they wanted like $9,500 at the Toyota dealer at their used car lot because, oh, it's a Celica. And even though it was 20 years old, oh, it's a sports car and these are really good cars. And sure, I got a deal on this one for 350, but they're selling something for almost 30 times what I paid for this car. You're never gonna get a real deal at one of these used car lots. But if you have to buy from a used car lot, if you do one thing and one thing only, tell them you wanna see a clean title. You don't wanna get one that's a, reconditioned title or salvage title. It meant the insurance company had totaled it because they buy tons of those and then fix them as cheap as they can and sell them. Which is why I tell people, don't go to these car auctions either, unless you're a pro, because the pros at the car lots, they might go with 10 grand, they might buy five or six cars, and they might sell each one of them for five or $6,000, so even if they get two or three lemons, they're still making a whole bunch of money. But you're only buying one car at an auction. It's a lemon, you're stuck with it, so stay away from car auctions too if you're buying a used car that you can use as an everyday driver. I'm always being asked by my customers and by you viewers, Scotty, should I buy a used car from a car rental agency? And my answer is generally, no. I would not buy a used car from a car rental agency. And my first reason for not wanting to buy a car that came from a car rental company has to do with me and other people who rent cars all the time. When I travel distances, I don't have time to drive. I fly in a plane, then I rent a car. And when I rent cars, generally, I beat the heck out of them. I'm in a hurry. I don't care what kind of roads I go on. I really don't care where I park the car. They're not taken care of by the drivers all that much. Rental cars often take 
large beatings over a couple of years. Hundreds of people probably rent each individual car. Who knows how they drive, how they took care of it, if they hit curbs, if they backed up into stuff. And here's a big thing that a lot of people might not understand, but they're gonna find out now. Most major car rental places, they're self-insured. They insure themselves, they're so big, they save money that way. But, it can be a bad thing if you're buying a used one from them. If you're self-insured, hey, they handle it all in-house. What happens is, if it's been in a wreck, you may never find out. Do a Carfax, if it didn't go through an insurance company, Carfax isn't gonna have any information on, oh gee, it was wrecked and then they fixed it. They do that all in-house. I had a customer, bought a Mazda from one of these car rental places. About a year later, he got in a little wreck and his body man said, hey, look at this. This car's been in a big wreck before because it's got an aftermarket bumper on it. It's not the Mazda bumper. Well, he was never told that the car had been in a wreck, but unfortunately for the car rental company, my customer was a lawyer. He was gonna sue him and he said, what do you want? And he says, well, you know, I want the money back I paid for the car and I'm gonna keep the car. And so that's what they gave him. But still, that was a car that had been in a wreck. And if you take a big company like say Hertz, last I checked they had over 400,000 cars that they had that they were renting out in the United States. That's a lot of cars and a lot of stuff can fall under the cracks. I wouldn't advise anybody to buy one of those cars myself. And that actually brings me to another reason not to buy a car from them. They're priced way too high. They're all done by their bookkeepers to say, well, we depreciated this much of this, and if they say want $22,500 for the car, that's what they're going to ask, and they won't accept anything less. They're selling cars, and they said, these cars go for this kind of money. We don't take anything less, and as I've said in a previous video, the book value of cars is artificially inflated in the United States. The companies that make these book ratings of what cars are worth and now owned by companies that sell used cars. So it's a very corrupt system. Take England. In England, used cars are much cheaper than the United States because they don't have such a corrupt system as they do here in the United States. To give you an analogy, go to a jeweler. Show them a diamond ring, get it appraised. And then say, okay, what will you give me for that? Well, they're gonna give you tons less because they wanna sell it and make a bunch of money. So it's to their advantage that the sales price for them is really high, even though the actual value it's much lower. And with these car rental companies, like I said, they say one low price, you know, what a bunch of nonsense, the money that they want to get. And if you don't want it, hey, they won't sell it to you. Because in reality, used cars are used. Anything that's used, as far as I'm concerned, has whatever value anybody will pay for it. There is no actual value set in stone. And considering that you'd be buying a used car that had been driven by hundreds of different people, and the price is really high, that's not fair. If you buy a car from a one owner car, you know he took care of it. He's thinking, well, I'm gonna keep it for a while, I'm gonna sell it, so I'm gonna take good care of it, fine. But if you're buying a car that's been driven by hundreds of different people at a really high price, it's just not a smart thing to do. The rental car companies get a big deal. I mean, look at Hertz. If they own over 400,000 cars that they're renting out, they're gonna cut a pretty tight deal on what they're gonna pay for these cars. So my friend who worked at the Chevy factory said, hey, we all knew the next 5,000 were going to rental cars, so we didn't have to be that great on the fit and the finish because it wasn't being bought by a private individual who might look at the car, examine it, make sure everything's okay. It's being sold in a fleet to a rental car company. Let's face it, even when you rent a car, when you bring it back, there's usually a very cursory check of the car when you bring it back. Especially guys like me, if I fly out early in the morning and it's five o'clock in the morning and you drive it in, guy just kind of looks around the car and checks the mileage and sees it's full of gas and that's it. And personally, I have to vouch on this. They seem to be cheaper made, the ones that are sent to the rental car companies because I rented a car once in Wisconsin. Well, I got in the car and closed the door on the inside one time and a couple of screws fell out on my lap from the dash when I closed the door. I guess they weren't so prideful in Indiana when they made that rental car. <laughs> if these rental car companies are cutting the best deal that they can, but the company's making them thinking, well, they really cut us down. We're not making much profit, so let's whip these things out as fast as we can. Heck, over the decades I've been renting cars, I had cars where the dashes weren't even glued in right. They were crooked. A lot of them had much more rattles than normal cars that my customers had in them even though they were low mileage when I was renting them. And if you're looking at buying a used one, say of a model that's notorious for having transmission problems, people who are renting them, you're driving the heck out of them. They don't care that the transmission's weak. It's not their car. A private individual owns one. 
Odds are they're going to take better care. They're not going to drive it as fast. Taking chances with the transmission by over revving it and stuff. But when it's a rental car, hey, that stuff happens all the time. So if you got a relatively weak transmission to begin with, and you're buying a rental car with that, hey, I've had many customers have that happen, and the transmissions went out within a couple of years of them buying the vehicle. And of course, another reason I say not to buy them is the maintenance factor. Guys who are mechanics for the car rental companies, they don't get paid like regular mechanics do at a dealership. As an example, last I checked, they were paying about $33,000 a year for the mechanics at Hertz. While the Ford mechanics, they were getting paid on average about $47,000 a year. So not only are the mechanics at the rental car places being paid less, they have to work on all the different kinds of cars that the company buys. Where, say a guy's working at a Ford dealership, he's only working on Fords, he has all the specialized equipment at the Ford garage, and of course he's going to do a better job. He's getting paid more, he has better equipment, and people can tout all they want. Oh, we have service records for it. It's paperwork. It means nothing. I've been in many rental cars where the maintenance lights were on. When I checked the oil, the oil was low because they hadn't changed it regularly enough. Hey, paperwork doesn't mean anything. Anybody can fill out paperwork. What's actually done, that can be another story entirely. But, let's say you're in a pinch and you got to get a car fast. Well, let's face it, they got a lot of late model cars. And yes, you're going to overpay. They charge too much for them. But let's say you're looking at a Toyota Corolla. You're looking at a really bulletproof car. I've got customers with them. They have two, three hundred thousand miles, and basically all they ever did in the cars was change the oil and filter and the brake pads when they wore out, and they're still running strong. So they can take a lot of abuse before they fall apart. So if you're hard pressed to find a decent car, maybe get a Toyota Corolla from one of these. But please, don't go buy a Chrysler from one of these things. They're bad enough new, and you buy one that's been driven by hundreds of people. Who had a customer do that once with a Sebring, and that car just fell apart in the first year that he owned it. And if you are going to buy a used car from a rental car company, you pay a guy like me, a professional mechanic, to check it out before you buy. Because as I say, as they're self-insured, it might have been in a wreck, you're never going to be able to find out. But a good mechanic, hey, we can find that stuff out. When I'm checking out a used car, first thing I do is go all around with a flashlight and look for mismatched paint where I can see, hey, this black part's got a little white on it and it's a white car. Obviously, it's been wrecked and repainted. We can find that stuff pretty fast. And of course, don't listen to anything the salesman says. I've done that for customers and showed them that, look, this car was obviously in a wreck and they go back and they say, oh, your mechanic's crazy. Oh, look, the paperwork shows it's never been in a wreck. Well, like I said, paperwork, anybody can make up paperwork. Actually, obviously, that the car's been in a wreck, you don't buy it. And you can't trust anybody these days. So you have a mechanic check it out before you buy. You can tell paint imperfections. And if you see, gee, this fender's a little different color than the hood, you'll know it's been wrecked. Then you walk away from that car right away and start looking at the other ones. A lot of times right before they sell them, they do all the cosmetic stuff. So let's say you're looking to buy one, use your nose too. Because if you smell fresh paint all over the place, you know, they've touched it all up and they painted it all over just to sell it to you. And then you might find a year later all that paint starts to fade off because they didn't do such a hot job. They just want to get them to look as shiny as possible on the outside and unload them as fast as they can because they have hundreds of thousands of them that they have to get rid of. My advice is stay away from buying a used car from a rental car lot. Now, I'm a big proponent of buying used cars. CarMax only sells used cars. But there's one main reason you buy a used car, and that is to save money. And CarMax, their prices are way too high. Thousands of dollars more than you can find at many other places. I had a customer a couple years ago bought a five-year-old car from CarMax. It had 60,000 something miles on it, and they only saved $4,000 off of what a brand new one would have cost. I mean, really, if you can buy a car that's five years old and has 60 something thousand miles on it, and all you're saving is $4,000 on a $25 to $30,000 car, you might as well just go out and buy a brand new one. Some of my own customers, they balked at the prices, and I've even met professionals that said, I don't know how they do it at CarMax, but they charge so much more for their cars and get away with it. Yes, CarMax is a big corporation. In 2018, net sales and operating revenues of over 17 
billion dollars. Yes, billion. So it's a gigantic company. So they have lots of cars. But therein lies a lot of the problems. Those used cars have to come from somewhere. They have to keep turning over, getting more and more and more and more. So obviously they don't know that much about the cars that they're selling to you. That's the big rub is when you buy a used car, you really want to know where did that car come from? Who drove it? Now I know that CarMax sells cars that were previously rental cars because I've had customers buy them and have some problems with them. But when I tried to research what percentage is, pretty much Stonewall. They don't give much information on any of that. It's a relatively secretive company. I mean, if people found out that, I have no idea what the figures are, but let's say 20% of the cars on our lot were rental cars. Well, I made a whole video on why you don't want to buy a rental car. People drive the heck out of them. They're not maintained all that well not a good idea to buy a rental car and a lot of people know that so they're not giving any of that information out to the public so they got a car they're the only ones in town that have the one you're looking for first thing you want to do is say I want to see where this car came from was it a rental car was it a lease car by law they actually have to tell you that stuff they can't hide it from you they're certainly not going to offer up front and say well you know this was a rental car <laughs> but by law they got to tell you so you must ask that the first thing I do if I was looking at a car there, they said it was a rental car, I just walk. It's their price or the highway. If you don't want to buy a car that you picked out at the price they're asking, they'll say, well, we got some other ones on the lot. Look at that. That's the price that they're going to sell it for. They are so big and they work in such massive numbers that they have all that stuff crunched down. And they don't even go by stuff like the Kelly Blue Book value. They have their own valuation of cars. They don't follow any of that stuff. They see how what they paid for, what they want their profit margin. This is a big corporation. All those numbers are crunched down. You go to one, see how many people work there. They're huge places. And being a small time guy myself in my little tiny garage, I know what big places create. They create tremendous overheads. They gotta pay for that overhead. If you're buying cars from them, you're paying for their overhead. So they charge more for their cars to make profit. As I said, some people that are in the business say to me, Scotty, I don't know how those guys get away with charging those prices, but they do. Well, I know the main reason they get away with it. And the main reason is this. Most people these days don't know that much about cars. What they're worth, what kind of shape they're in. So. They're selling to a pretty much ignorant public. Do you ever think you're going to get a deal? These guys are pros. They buy cars and they sell cars and they buy them low and they sell them as high as they possibly can. And with $17 billion in sales last year, they're selling a lot of cars for a lot of money. For your advantage of a CarMax, I do have to admit, they have a very wide choice. They know which cars are popular, which cars aren't. So when I got a popular car, they're gonna sell it for the highest price they possibly can. They got a third row SUV. They know people are looking for those. They're gonna get top dollar for it. Really older cars. They actually sell at auctions every once in a while at their stores. But these auctions are only open to professional people that are in the car business. So they might get a decent deal on an eight-year-old car that's got 120,000 miles that they don't want to sell at their store or I even had a customer trade on this clunky Mercedes they had and it was absolutely falling apart six grand for the car I wouldn't have given them 600 bucks and they asked him they said what are you gonna do with this Mercedes because it needs all this work they said oh we're not even gonna sell it here in the United States we ship those down to South America down in South America cars go for a fortune they like Mercedes so They'll probably fix it up down there and get a reasonable profit on it. In the United States, if they would have fixed it up, tried to sell it, they would have spent so much money fixing it, it wouldn't have made any sense. These guys know how to make money. There's no arguing with that. But being a large corporation, the guys are always trying to sell you stuff. When you do buy the car there, they do the tax, title, license, and they charge you a premium for that. They don't do that stuff for free. And of course, they try to sell you those extended warranty policies, which is more profit that's in their pockets. I mean, it's a big company. They make a lot of money. They're the biggest used car dealer in the United States. You're not going to get any kind of a great deal with them. Now, yes, it's convenient because they have stores all over the place. And if they have a store, say you're in Houston, and they got one in Albuquerque that you want, 
they'll ship it to you. Now you gotta pay the shipping cost, that's not free. They do have a rather wide choice cause they're so large. And they do give a five day money back guarantee. If something weird happened and you really got a lemon that passed through their check system, you will get your money back. And the whole thing about buying used cars is to save money. I mean, if you're only gonna save a pittance of a few thousand dollars, you might as well buy a new car and have the security of it's brand new. It's got the full brand new warranty. I had a customer five years ago buy a CarMax car after big rainstorms, which occurred much after the five day warranty was over, he found out that the trunk leaked. So he took it into his body, man, and the guy said, oh, this thing's been wrecked. That's why the trunk's leaking. I gotta bend things back and reseal it so it doesn't leak. So he got a car that had been in a wreck. They didn't tell him it had been in a wreck, but it obviously had been in a wreck. You're gonna buy a used car, you wanna save a whole bunch of money. If you're only saving a little bit of money and you're still taking the risk of buying a used car, buy a new one instead then. And as most people who are buying a car are also getting rid of their old car, they pay really low value on your car when you're trading it in. As an example, I had a customer had a car, and the street, the thing's worth about 10 grand. They gave them five grand for it. So right there, they're making $5,000. CarMax's asking price of the car they're selling you is higher than everybody else. They're making a five grand taking your car and they're making at least 10% more than what the car is worth. That's kind of an average of the figures that I've seen, but a lot of times it's a lot more than 10% of what the car is worth that they're selling you. So it's a pretty sweetheart deal for them. <laughs> they pay you half of what your car is worth you're trying it in, then they charge you 10% or more for the car that you're buying. So now you know, if you really want to get a good deal on a quality used car, stay away from CarMax. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.